Well, hello. Good morning. Welcome to our, I guess I should have held the mug up, to our time with coffee together. We're going to go to a book we have not been to yet. I figured after a year, maybe I should actually make a list, see what books we, we have explored in our time together, uh, which we haven't, because I know some we talked about in some of those afternoon series we were doing in the spring and summer and fall last year. Um, you know, so yeah, but here in coffee time. I know folks only usually do one or the other. Um, so here at Coffee Time, I, I realized we've done a bunch, most of the Bible, I would say. We, I think it was about all but 20 books. Um, and uh, it's kind of funny. There were certain books we hit a lot. Like, you know, Psalms, the Gospels, Isaiah, which makes sense. Like, large Exodus, large, uh, um, larger books. But even some of the more obscure ones we did already cover. But there are a lot of, especially those, uh, late Old Testament prophets, late epistles that are like 20 verses total. I'll find a way to work them in eventually. We're going to get every book in here. And today, we get in the book of Ezra. All right. So, and, and as a reminder, the Bible Library series is a great resource if you're like, what are these books anyway? I kind of give you a, a succinct, uh, somewhat, depending on the video, somewhat succinct summary of what each book is about. You might be interested in reading them. We're going to start at Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Yes, the very beginning. I'm going to just read the first four verses to kind of set the picture here. So Ezra 1, uh, 1 through 4. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia. So he sent a herald throughout all the kingdom, and also a written edict declaring, quotation, Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem and Judah. Among uh, any of those among you who are of his people, may their God be with them, and are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem and Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel, and he is the God who is in Jerusalem. Let all survivors in whatever place they reside be assisted by the people of their place with silver and gold, with goods in them, with animals, besides free will offerings for the house of the God in Jerusalem. So this is a big moment here. This is talking about the rebuilding the temple. This is the second temple, actually. Remember the first temple we had uh, in the Old Testament is destroyed uh, in, in the uh, Babylonian captivity. And this is the second one. And this is, yes, the same temple that will be around when Jesus uh, shows up on the scene you know, a couple hundred years later. So, uh, this is... <coughs> uh, more than a couple. Anyway, this is a, a big moment that this foreign king, Cyrus of Persia, you know, he's, he's not a... Um, he's not Jewish. He's a foreign liberator, actually, for them, freeing them from their captivity and exile. Um, but as, as, the, as Ezra tells us, Jeremiah had foretold this. And I think we covered that a couple weeks ago about the chosen servant, well, also Nebuchadnezzar, but then Cyrus as well, so as the uh, restorer. And so I would say, for our theme, oh, boy, if you're for almost four minutes in this video, you're sticking with us, thank you. Uh, it's worth it. Our theme, I think, well, it actually kind of fits our theme perfectly. Wow. Um, our theme is that sometimes God show, cares and shows up in gradual ways. Hey, look at that. Like four minutes into a video, you finally get to the point. Um, God, from the very moment that judgment is upon them, the very moment it is clear that the people have refused to repent, they cannot save themselves, destruction is imminent, it is too late, it's over, they did not listen to the prophets, etc., etc., God is already saying to the prophets, preach a message of hope. Tell them that this will only be temporary. Tell them that we will be restored. Yes, there have been consequences to your actions, and you must, you must feel the cost of those consequences now. But there will be restoration. And this is that eventual restoration that is happening. Ezra is the declarer of that good news finally happening. Uh, the prophets that foretold it originally, Jeremiah and such, they, they weren't around anymore. Um captivity you know lasted longer than their lifetime anyway so god from that very beginning the beginning of the disaster and exile into, into the foreign lands had been working all along uh, uh through 
Cyrus of Persia, through the people, through uh, all the events happening in the world to bring this to fruition. It's sometimes God showing up and caring. Like we talked about yesterday, isn't always dramatic. It isn't this big moment. Sometimes it's all the little things that, that add up over time. Like any big movement uh, in the world, whether it was the Reformation or the Civil Rights Movement, it took time. It took uh, people over uh, generations even working towards an ultimate goal. God uh, bringing something good to fruition slowly and surely so it could be effective. We see this, of course, in Jesus Christ. Generations of the faithful built up to that moment where Christ arrived, declared the forgiveness of sins through the death and resurrection. Whew. All right. God. Got through there, got there eventually, just like God sometimes. Totally planned that. All right, we'll be back with you tomorrow. Hopefully you will show up. And tomorrow, together, we will care. <laughs>